This year, for the first time, a spacecraft reached the dark side of the moon. Actually, this is improperly said the dark side because it's not dark at all. But it's the part of the moon, the face of the moon, that we never seen because you know the, the, the rotation of the Earth and the moon are synchronous. And therefore, from the Earth, we only see the typical face of, of our um, moon. Uh, this year, for the first time, as I said, uh, the, the spacecraft called uh, Chang E4 from China uh, reached this, uh, this uh, far side, let's call it this way, far side of the moon. And the, uh, the target of this mission was uh, uh, to discover if there are other minerals with respect to the Apollo missions uh, 50 years ago uh, that can tell us uh, something more about the evolution of uh, the moon. This was actually a very important uh, project because we must uh, remind that the, the Earth, let's start from the Earth, uh, the Earth has uh, the crust, the typical crust uh, done by those minerals called feldspars mainly, which are silicates of uh, calcium, sodium, uh, aluminium, potassium. And below the, the crust, we have the mantle. The mantle is done mainly by olivine, which is uh, magnesium and iron silicate, and orthopyroxenes, which are actually minerals, again, silicates of iron and, and uh, magnesium with some small amount of calcium. And uh, what it was a little bit uh, surprising is that when Apollo missions uh, returned samples from the moon, we didn't find at all any olivine, any orthopyroxene, but we only found uh, feldspars. Actually, we found mainly plagioclase, which is a, a silicate of uh, sodium, calcium, and aluminium. So the question is, why we didn't get any other minerals uh, other than this? Uh, probably when the Apollo mission uh, collected the samples, they clearly collected the samples uh, where they landed. So uh, the very clever uh, idea of a Chinese, Chinese mission was to uh, land their spacecraft in an impact crater, very, very, very large, which is called uh, South Pole Aitken, which is a 2,500 uh, kilometers diameter basin. And the idea is very simple. If the basin is so wide, there should, there should have been a very big impact that could excavate rocks below the surface uh, by even 100, 200 kilometers depth. If this is true, then the rocks from the mantle probably reached and uh, filled in uh, um, the, the, the crater of uh, this uh, very important, uh, important place. So the idea is that uh, to verify if this is true. So they sent the spacecraft called the Chang'e 4 to the dark side of the moon and uh, by when they landed, then they sent out uh, the, the, the rover called U-22. And the U-22 did the uh, spectroscopic analysis on the rocks and on the surface of this basin. And uh, for the first time, we really verified that that part of the moon is mainly done by olivine, exactly the same silicate that we have on the Earth, and uh, orthopyroxene which is the other one. Uh, together, olivine and, uh, and orthopyroxene uh, form a large part of the upper mantle of the Earth. And this is exactly what uh, Ch Chang E4 found uh, on the Moon. So this opens really new scenarios about the evolution of the Moon and uh, about what we have to do for the future. The, now, of course, the target would be for the future to return samples from the Moon from that part of the moon and to study many, many, many geological aspects from the chemistry, from the rare earth elements, distribution and the evolution, age. This is another important aspect. We must know when these materials uh, grow up, uh, grew up for the first time. Let's see what happens for the future for these missions.